Though she had little to spare, a woman chose to give an envelope of money to a homeless young man she encountered on the street. Years later, her compassionate gesture came full circle when she received a $2 million mansion from a stranger. Janice and Jerry lived together in a rented apartment in a less affluent part of town. While Janice worked two jobs to cover their rent and expenses, Jerry remained unemployed, claiming he was attending job interviews. I'm just not lucky enough. No one's hiring me, he often lamented. In reality, he was simply lazy, spending his days in bed while Janice worked tirelessly outside the home. Janice decided to treat Jerry to a nice restaurant in a fancy neighborhood nearby on their second anniversary. We haven't eaten out in a good restaurant in ages. Let's go out on a date, she told him. She prettied herself up for the occasion, wearing makeup and a beautiful black dress she hadn't worn in a while. When they got to the restaurant, Jerry couldn't stop shifting in his seat. This restaurant is way too expensive. We should have just eaten at a diner and spent the rest of the money on alcohol. Come on. We don't get to do this often. Just enjoy it. Janice encouraged him. Unfortunately, it didn't work. As they browsed through the menu, Jerry kept blurting out comments. For the price of one shot over here, I could have bought an entire case of beer. He said angrily, tossing the menu on the table. Janice was beginning to feel upset. She had worked hard to be able to treat Jerry to the restaurant. She thought he would enjoy it, as he often spoke about restaurants in the fancy neighborhood. As they were leaving the restaurant, things got worse when a homeless young man approached them. I'm sorry for bothering you, the man said. Do you have any money to spare? I don't have food or money, and I'm all alone. Janice's heart melted. The boy couldn't have been over 20 years old, and he looked frail. Jerry, let's help him, she said, tugging his arm. Jerry shook his head. Why would we? After that meal, we might as well be begging in the streets too. This guy is a scammer, he said, walking ahead of Janice, who stayed behind and decided to talk to the boy. What happened to you? She asked. The young man revealed that his parents had died and he was all alone. He wasn't accepted into an orphanage anymore as he was nearing legality. Janice didn't hesitate to open her bag and take out an envelope of money, but Jerry saw this from afar and was furious. Are you kidding me? Don't hand our money to a stranger. That's for our rent. We don't have extra money, and you know it, he screamed. Irritated at Jerry's lack of compassion, Janice shot back. This is my money, and I can do with it as I please. I want to help him. You're unbelievable. I can't watch this. I'm leaving, he said, walking away ultimately. It was just Janice and the young boy on the street, and while she initially wanted to give him some bills, she looked at him in the eye for a couple of seconds before sealing the envelope again. Take it she said, handing him the entire envelope. The young man was shocked. How can I pay you back? He asked. Janice shook her head. You don't have to. Just pay it forward and help someone else in need when you can. You're an angel, ma'am. Thank you for this. I can now buy food and look for a space to stay. May I ask what your name is? He asked. Janice Meyer, she replied with a smile on her face. Several years passed and Janice lived alone in a small house she broke up with Jerry, realizing she didn't want to be with a man like him. One morning, she heard a knock on her door. It was her landlord serving her an eviction notice. Time's up, Janice, the landlord said. You haven't paid rent in two months, and I just can't take it anymore. You have until today to vacate the house, or else we're going to court. Janice's eyes started to fill with tears. You don't understand. I lost my job. I have nowhere to go, she cried. If you don't leave the house today, police will be involved. Do you want that? The landlord threatened. At that moment, a man in an expensive business suit appeared on Janice's doorstep. No need to involve the police, the man said, taking off his sunglasses. This woman will be moving to her new home. Janice looked at him, puzzled. The man looked familiar, but she couldn't pinpoint where she had seen him previously. May I come in? The man asked her. Still staring at the man, she slowly nodded, making way for him to enter the house. As soon as he got in, he handed her an envelope. It was a land title, showing she now owned a mansion worth $2 million. Wait, it says this house is under Janice Meyer. Why? I don't have any money to buy this house, she told the man, and he smiled. When I was homeless, you handed me an envelope of money. It was more than enough, and I was able to study because of what you gave me. 
I now work in the IT industry and own several startups. It's all because of that push you gave me years back, the man revealed. Janice was stunned and couldn't help but cover her mouth with her hand. Is it really you? I'm so glad to see you've made it through. He nodded. I saw online an eviction notice for Janice Meyer. I went straight here. I realized you needed help. The man handed Janice his business card and she saw that his name was Darian James. Thank you, she cried. Thank you, Darian. I don't know how I can ever repay you. This is too much, she told him. Darian shook his head. Just pay it forward and help somebody in need, he said and smiled. After moving into her new home, Janice struck up a friendship with her neighbor Darian. Both living alone, they frequently shared meals and celebrated holidays together.